Hi everyone, I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee, SNS Storm Chasers, meteorologist Joe weatherlongisland.com for all your latest uh, storm chasing or your local weather needs. Now, I want to take a look at the tropics today because uh, very interesting uh, developments uh, overnight uh, with what's going on at the moment and also with the models, which we're going to take a look at in depth. This is the disturbance that uh, continues to approach the Leeward Islands and uh, it's uh, known as disturbance 99L. And we've noticed that there's been a continuing increase in uh, thunderstorm activity as it's moved westward. We also noticed that the convection seems to be getting a little more concentrated uh, in this area here. You can kind of pick out the, uh, the tops of the thunderstorms blowing up as it moves westward. So the fact that we've seen this system hold together now and, and, and an increase in convection is a sign that perhaps we're going to see some development over the next couple of days. The Hurricane Center actually has this set a 60% chance of developing over the next five days and 50% chance over the next couple because of the fact that there's still this issue of some drier air around. But uh, I want to show you on the wide view how, how this is all playing out. Here we have uh, our disturbance approaching uh, the leewards. You have what's left of Fiona barely hanging on as a depression right up here. And in the corner now, and you can see it uh, completely as it's come into view, is Tropical Storm Gaston, which continues to strengthen fairly quickly. And would not at all be surprised if this becomes a hurricane uh, at this time tomorrow as it's moving toward the west-northwest. Now, let's look at what's happening in terms of the models and you know, one of the things I noticed last night was with respect to the Canadian model, which is often regarded to be the most, the silliest of all the models, it actually was pretty reasonable. It stopped rotating 500 storms. It stopped spinning up 500 storms and rotating them all around itself. Now, uh, when we look at this, one of the things that happens, we're looking at the upper flow. So we have a westerly flow from from New Jersey northward through all of New England and beyond and across the Atlantic. There's a weakness here in the ridge. So Gaston is going to respond to that ridge weakness and turn northwestward and then eventually north and northeastward. All the models have that, by the way. So that's the easy part of the forecast may be Gaston in that it looks like it's going to just pretty much react according to formula and respond to that weakness and then turn away to the northeast. And you can see it here at how it's reflected uh, in a law. Now, the issue regarding the system approaching the leewards moving northwestward uh, into, into the Bahamas. The, all the models have that uh, to, to some degree. The Canadian and the European were fairly uh, aggressive, in my view, in what they showed. And then the HWRF model, which is the, one of the hurricane models, was very aggressive. But uh, here's the the... the the Canadian, I'm going to switch over to the European, and I'm going to switch over to the GFS, okay? And what is notable in all three models is the fact that we have this strong ridge that's building um, off the uh, East Coast, along the East Coast. Uh, you can see it here. It's pretty well defined uh, right there, okay? So you've got all three models doing this, and the European uh, and the Canadian both develop the surface low, the a surface low from system 99L uh, into a uh, into tropical storms. Uh, the difference is that uh, the it has to do with the strength of the upper high. The uh, European has a stronger upper high, so it tends to deflect that system to the west uh, into across southern Florida and then up the west coast of Florida into the Panhandle and then northeastward from there. The Canadian has it a little weaker, so it takes it gets uh, the system a little further north, and it does the same idea where it takes it westward, except uh, it it takes it westward further north. So I'm going to switch the surface, and you can take a look at that. Um, let me just get there first. I got to change models, and there we go. And let's change to precip and you can see it here this is the Canadian view we don't have a European view that matches with this but the Canadian takes it almost straight west into Georgia before it turns it northeastward from there the European just has it a couple of hundred miles further south but it has the same idea 
So, and, and again, no, both models take, you know, all the models take Gaston out to the Northeast and goodbye. So the other thing I wanted to show you, and this is, you know, the extremely aggressive HWRF model today, which uh, you can see here, let me just back it up. It, it, it actually has a reflection of a surface low with uh, 99L. Uh, as it uh, moves across the northern leewards, north of Puerto Rico, and then it starts to intensify a low as it approaches the Bahamas and, and actually winds up with a, a, a very, very powerful hurricane east of the Bahamas. This model tends to be overly aggressive on a, in a lot of respects. So uh, I would consider that an outlier at this point. I don't like to rely you know, I'm, I don't like to say that this model is going to be correct if it's the only one that's doing it. Uh, and right now, it's the only one that's as aggressive as it is. By the way, you can see the remnant of Fiona still sitting up east of North Carolina here and Gaston on the edge of your picture. Uh, I want to point out that the GFS and the GFDL models do not develop this system at all. Just keep it as a weak low or an open trough, and that's pretty much it. Uh, but to me, judging from the fact that we have this going on this morning, says that uh, you know the system seems to want to hold together so you know we're going to have to watch and see what happens once it gets west of the leewards and west of puerto rico uh, and see if anything develops uh, you, you know as it goes uh, on its merry way toward the uh, bahamas so we've got a lot to watch over the next few days in the meantime our weather has been absolutely gorgeous and we've got blue skies and sunshine that should continue into th to through wednesday Turns a little more humid on Thursday. We have a cold front coming through Thursday night. With that, there could be some showers and thunderstorms. And then it looks to me like we'll go back to some sunshine for Friday and for the start of the weekend. So have a great day. Don't forget SNS Storm Chasers, Meteorologist, JoeChoppy.com, and WeatherLongIsland.com for all your storm chasing and weather needs.